Welcome to Talkin' Baloney. Calvin Coco Pop. This is Booty. Oh, gosh. <laughs> What's going on? No script allowed. What are you, some kind of bot? Come on, people. <laughs> oh, yeah. You want a pickle, you gotta give him a pickle, right? <laughs> I want to be a movie star. Wow, that sounds so interesting. Fresh and quick. Pucky, pucky, pizza. Part of the Baloney Nation. Jim DZ. You guys still there? Jim Man, the big guy. What's going on? What is up? Man, I, you know, I hear that intro and I just want some Pudgy's Pizza now, man. <laughs> <laughs> well, I mean, you always want Pudgy's Pizza, though, right? Yeah, always. It, you know, listen, a little birdie told me that in about 17 days, we might have that live Pudgy's Pizza song right on our show. Oh, really? Yeah, we might do a, a special Christmas, a special okay. Christmas Pudgy song. I can't wait. Yeah, actually, the, the the singer of that song is actually going to be at the house here soon. <laughs> okay. Uh, pending COVID test. <laughs> oh. <laughs> you don't come in from Florida into these parts without a COVID test. <laughs> <laughs> you got that right. <laughs> Damn straight. What's going on, man? Well, we're in the, the holiday spirit. We just had Thanksgiving. Yeah. yeah. How was your Thanksgiving during the uh, the COVID times? Well, it was, uh, you know, thankfully, I, I still got uh, some family that, uh, you know, Aunt B's kitchen was open, and uh, she made us little go-to uh, bags and stuff for Thanksgiving, and, uh, you know, it was, it was different. It wasn't the same as every year getting together, but, uh, you know, the food was still there, the food was still good, and I guess I'm thankful for that. Now, normally, your family tradition includes a giant football game. A giant family football game. Usually every year where I star in the game, and I'm like the greatest athlete, sports phenom, if you want to call it that. Um, I've also hit my head many, many times during this game. Okay. So it may not be 100% the way I'm recalling it right now, but... Uh... <laughs> yeah, because I was going to say, I've been there for probably uh, 25 of those games. and uh... Yeah. It is bad. I'm sure I remember that. <laughs> <laughs> you know, all I ask is if somebody would just pass me the ball, I'd be fine. <laughs> <laughs> the problem is nowadays you have to, like, run. Yeah. Who yeah, wants to know? do that? Uh, I tapped out. Let the other people run. <laughs> <laughs> I did you see that. Mad... <laughs> you pull muscles doing that. <laughs> I saw a mad dog uh, kept the tradition alive with – a little uh, three-on-one Mad Dog versus family game. Yeah, it's about the same way the teams are stocked when we play our family football game. Usually it feels like you're playing, you know, five-on-one every time you play. <laughs> he usually lines up all the youngsters and the speed demons and the ones that have <laughs> professional sports experience <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> for his team against all of us that come out of retirement once a year that should stay retired. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, now, Jim, anyway. <laughs> being in the holiday spirit. Oh, yeah. Special, I mean, special show. Yeah, you are really taking the word Hollywood spirit to heart. Oh, yeah. Because you've yeah. got something really special planned. What are you doing today? So, and between our segments and throughout the show, we're going to sample some of Christmas's fine uh, liqueurs and whiskeys and uh, different assortments of uh beverage so to speak um we have there's our no, <laughs> there's no our man little... woman or child alive today who doesn't enjoy a fine beverage a fine beverage and i'm not folks listen i i'm a sprite guy i like sprite you know when my stomach is, i know my stomach's gonna be a little off i'll have some sprite but i'm not sure. talking this kind of fine beverage oh no oh no 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 we're talking some finer beverages Okay, that this ain't looks your like... sip, this ain't your sipping tea, folks. <laughs> <laughs> that is Jim Beam Apple Whiskey. Apple Whiskey, brand new bottle. You can see it hasn't been tampered with. That's Seal's true. still on it. We're going to sample COVID some. Tested. Uh, also, all, all, all perfectly tested. We're going to go to a tried and true. Fireball. Fireball. Cinnamon Whiskey. Cinnamon Whiskey. <laughs> yeah. And then, you know, once we're kind of settling things down a little bit and we get in that holiday spirit, 
going to crack open oh. some Williams eggnog. <laughs> <laughs> Evan Williams original Southern eggnog. Oh yeah. Yeah. Wow. <laughs> Yep, and then uh, we got a fourth one because that's about all we're probably going to be able to handle before you're picking me up off the floor. Um, some green apple Smirnoff. Now, the reason why I want a small bottle on this is after the other ones, I'm probably going to be dead. <laughs> <laughs> and what better way to celebrate the holidays? Oh, huh? What? <laughs> Wait, what? Oh. <laughs> and we got our little solo cups, little shot solo cups nice. to keep this... Uh, you know, perfect. So yeah, so I'm right. gonna try to gonna try to bring a special holiday show, kind of pick up the spirits of our million listeners that we have. <laughs> so we are talking holiday movies as well. Correct. So as you are pouring your first shot, who? What should we open first? I think you got to go in the order you presented yeah, the them. Order I think you go, that, right? Jim Beam. All right. All right, we're cracking open the Jim Beam. <laughs> Let's just say, can you hear that, folks? Go, 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 go. Yep. Okay. Arr. And I can tell you right now, I am smelling a lot of apples right out the gate. Right out the gate. So, folks, full shot glass. Uh, I don't know if you can see the cup. I'm trying to tip it towards you just a tad bit without dumping it on the keyboard. It's full. And. What's the word we say? <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> Cheers. Salute. Bottoms up. <laughs> ah. It's got some heat. <laughs> <laughs> well, that looked like it was good. Whew. I'm going to tell you right now, you definitely taste the apple. All day. <laughs> too much apple or, or just the no, right amount just right got a good little heat in the back of the throat right now like a hot chicken wing <laughs> wow and you know about hot chicken wings oh yeah yeah i did a couple of those i did a challenge <laughs> Woo! boy that gets hotter hotter i was like, spitting on myself it gets hotter as it sits there <laughs> <laughs> well there's nothing hotter in the stores this year than uh Christmas Vacation. How about that for uh, a holiday movie? You know, I just got done watching the Christmas Vacation marathon that was on TV. I watched it three times in a row. <laughs> so was that for Thanksgiving? Was that on? It was on for Thanksgiving. Yeah, it's been on pretty much every night this week uh, on the <laughs> uh, AMC movie channel. Oh, okay. Ooh, that does stay warm. Right in the back of the throat. Got a lot of heat. <laughs> I was not expecting that much heat in the back of the throat. wonder how they do that. Well, I think huh. that's just whiskey for you. But I'm not going to lie. That's good. That's good stuff. You could definitely get hammered on that if you, because it's just, <laughs> if you had a bigger cup, I, mean, I do have bigger cups, but I'm not trying to push it. I still got three more bottles to get through. <laughs> <laughs> oh, so you are going to do the entire bottle is what you're saying. Oh, probably. I don't no, no think I'll drink that old bottle. Today. Oh, I'll be, no, I'll be, no. no, I won't make it to Christmas. <laughs> <laughs> I got to work. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, Christmas Vacation. Yeah. Uh, this is a movie we've talked about a few times because it is oh, an yeah. all-time classic. But uh, yeah. what are some of the more underrated moments in that movie? The, maybe the moments we haven't really talked about yet. Listen, I'm going to... I'm going to jump right out. Let's talk about the opening scene of the movie. Clark okay. is trying to do his due diligence to keep the family traditions alive and keep the family together when picking out the Christmas tree. The, and you can obviously tell the kids don't appreciate it. They don't right. care. They want yeah. to sit. You know, I, I obviously cell phones weren't a big thing when National Lampoon's Christmas Vacation came out. But you can obviously tell that if they had a cell phone in their hand, they'd be on their cell phone. No. But I, I got to say, we missed the family values that go behind the Christmas Vacation movie. I mean, he he hits every one of them. It's all he's, it's never about him. It's about the kids and the family. Yeah, and I, I think that's one of the underrated things in that movie is the family. Seeing uh, Clark's uh, dad and, you know, the yeah. grandparents and, of course, the aunt and uncle – 
who sings the national anthem, and uh, Uncle Lewis, who uh, burns down the tree. Mm -hmm. I think the uh, seeing the extended family really made a big difference in that movie. Mm -hmm. And we didn't see that Melly Mel just drove by the window. <laughs> <laughs> no, I did not. <laughs> you know, I, I like I said, I I like that movie because it just takes me, it takes you back to a simpler time when you know Christmas was about the holidays and the traditions and. You know, it wasn't so much about gifts. It was about, hey, getting together with your family and having some fun and, you know, remember, remember recalling memories and probably stuff that I won't remember here after I have a couple more of these shots. But, uh, <laughs> you know, that kind of thing. <laughs> so uh, Cousin Eddie, Randy Quaid, uh, mm -hmm. it's kind of his uh, his big moment in the movie is the uh, yeah. kidnapping the boss and the whole uh, Christmas Fair bonus very underrated moment in the movie too. Like he never listens. And the one time that someone's like, Hey, I need a gift. If you ever wants to get me a gift, I'd like to thank Frank Shirley, my boss right here in my living room. I'd like him to, you know, keep from melody lane over, you know, where all the rich folk live and bring him right to my living room. And he does he, like, he does. He's <laughs> like, I, I need a gift for Clark and I'm going to get this gift. And he brings him back. That's a classic moment in the movie that I don't think, I think it's underappreciated. Yeah. All right. How about <laughs> another Christmas movie that plays 24-7 on uh, Superstation TBS, The Christmas Story? Jeez. Oh, Listen, I, you're going to shoot your eye out. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah I, I like the movie. Listen, I can watch this movie once, but, man, I, one time's enough. I get it. You know what I mean? Like. I still don't understand the lamp, the lamp leg. I don't get it. Like it's what was the, what's the point of it? <laughs> well, I, <laughs> I, I guess the point is that the father actually won something, and he like so ah, he never won. Okay, all right. So it's the fact that he won it, it meant something to him. Yeah, but the I fact that. that it was like an eyesore <laughs> made it like embarrassing to everyone else. <laughs> you know, I, I, I could, I. I can relate to the scene of, you know, the turkey getting mauled by all the dogs and stolen out the back. I can, I can relate to that because that's something I could see happening in my house. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and I, I would kind of agree that Christmas Story gets played way too much. Yeah. Like, uh, it's not really a special movie when you see it so many times every Christmas. No, and you know... <sighs> I'm sorry, but I think we're losing a little bit of the tradition stuff because what they're everybody wants to one up the next station now. So everybody's showing it earlier and then they're gonna show it instead of once, they show it five, you know, five, six nights in a row. Yeah. Over and over and over again. So it's like like I noticed with National Lampoon's Christmas Vacation the other night, the movie ended, it started again. It ended, it started again. Like they played <laughs> it three times in a row. Yeah. It, it, I, I, I watched it all three times, but <laughs> 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 but yeah, insane. And I, I, it's like it's, you know, I like the movie, but I think they've gotten to a point now where it's like, who's going to show it the most, and who's going to show it, how many times in a row, <laughs> you know, that kind of <laughs> <Yeah>. thing. <laughs> all right, Jim. I think it's time for another shot. All right, we're gonna go right to uh, Fireball. I'm nervous about this one. <laughs> Have you had that uh, fireball before? Or is this Never had time? it before. Never had it. Everybody whew, smells like a hot ball. <laughs> That's... Now I'm going to use I'm going to use the same solo cup that I used for the other one. Oh, well, hot apple action. Okay. Whew. I heard a dog barking outside. I might offer him a couple shots just to get him to quiet down for a little bit. <laughs> whew. All right. Got a nice, rich aroma. Now, folks, I'm not a professional drinker in any way, shape, or form. Hell, I don't even drink a, on occasions. <laughs> so I can tell you these are honest reviews and opinions of a product. So Fireball Cinnamon Whiskey has a really nice smell to it. Ah. <laughs> Holy shit. <laughs> Woo! But I need to. Ah! It's like a. Woo! 
Got it running down my face. That's hot. That's got some, it's got some fire to it. <laughs> <laughs> okay, now, on the scale of chicken wings, I'm gonna go. You know, hot being the hottest that Pudgies offers, I'll go probably two up from that in the back of the throat right now. <sighs> so hotter than the hottest wings at Pudgies. Yeah, got a little bit of a kick to it in the back. How is the taste? Um, I'm going to say it's like licking an extreme fireball. Right. The, the Actually, candy. It's, I would, I shouldn't say it's hot. I should say it's more of a cinnamony flavor. Right. Yeah. Woo. That's good too. <laughs> Not going to lie. That's got some good heat to it and I like it. <laughs> I could be an alcoholic off of that stuff. <laughs> <laughs> you see wow. me walking around. See me walking around the Walmart, like, hey, mister, how about a dollar? <laughs> <laughs> I need some of that there fireball. <laughs> I need some fireball. Some fireball. <laughs> <laughs> what the movie Elf with Will Ferrell? Love the movie, but again, I'm going to say it. They play it way too much. Yeah. Too much. It's just too much. Like, same thing with Elf the other night. It was on, you know, TBS or TNT, one of those stations, and it was literally Elf back to back to back to back. And I love Will Ferrell, but man, there's only only so much of Will Ferrell and green leotards and an Elf hat that I can possibly watch <laughs> before it's like, I, all right, I've seen it enough. I, I get it. I get it. <laughs> yeah. It, this actually, it feels like a serious problem that needs to be addressed at some point. Like, yeah, I mean. Too and, much and of a look, good thing. And I want you to think about this for a minute. I know this is probably a movie we'll touch on down the road, but uh, uh what's his name? Uh, ah, crap. The Peanuts Thanksgiving. Charlie Brown. Charlie Brown's Thanksgiving. We're damn near fighting Apple just to get it to watch it on a network. And, <laughs> you know, but we got all these other movies out there that we're just going to play till till they're dead, you know. But the one that everybody really wants to see not on TV. I think it, I think it was on one night. They played it one time. Uh, yeah, they they cut a deal with PBS so you could watch it on PBS. But uh, you know, and I, I'm not gonna lie. I have an iPhone. Look, just for just for giggles, folks. I do have an iPhone right there. You can tell by the camera notch. Boom, camera notch, front notch. You can tell all that. That's an iPhone. So I'm not being partial here when I say that Apple's become a Nazi company. <laughs> Well, I, mean, I don't think that's the case at all. It's it's the, the streaming universe that we live in. You know, it could have just as easily been Netflix or Amazon that had the rights to it. At least with Netflix, we'd all watch it. But, I mean, how many people have an Apple TV account? It comes free with your iPhone. You've got it. Yeah, I do. I have it free for one year. <laughs> yeah. And I did, watch the, I did watch the Peanuts movie the other night, too. <laughs> and, and I believe they made it free. If you just have the app, you can watch it. You don't have to subscribe. The uh, five oh, ninety nine to watch it. I did not know that, but yeah. listen, their app, their app is deceiving. I have the I have it free for one year, but you can't watch every movie that's on there without paying for it. Well, it's because it's not just, it's not just a Netflix type service. It's more yeah. like a Roku, where yep, it's an access point for you to get to other services as oh, well. Oh yeah, it's deceiving Apple. It's not really deceiving. It's the it's the same as uh, iTunes or uh, or Amazon. You know, it's it's the way. Oh, Apple. <laughs> right now, Jim Deasy for our audio listeners is holding up his bottle of Apple whiskey. <laughs> yep. No, I, I get it. I understand. It's all about money. You know, they're going to make tons of money off it. They're trying to draw on subscribers and. Pretty soon, you won't even need cable or satellite anymore. You'll just stream everything. Oh, I think a lot of people already, I mean, myself, I uh, ditched cable in 2014. I can tell you right now, if Monday Night Raw or SmackDown, uh, can you watch SmackDown on the Fox app? Yes. Well, then why you do I even watch, have Fish uh, Network anymore? <laughs> so you do need a uh, <laughs> cable password to watch a lot of these apps, but uh, if you can work around that, you're our golden. So you pay somebody 
20, 25 bucks, you know, under the table, give them their, get their password. You're good to go. Not Woo. that we're encouraging that. No, we would never encourage cable fraud. But if no. you can get away with it. <laughs> uh, how, about, <laughs> how about the movie Home Alone, 1990? Okay, so I'm a big, I like Home Alone. I've always been a fan of Home Alone. Even, yeah. I, I think Home Alone was one of those movies that got better with sequels, too. Like, the first one was good. Number two, number three. The Home Alone, I, I, I like number two a lot better than number one. So Home Alone 2, Lost in New York. Um, I like that one. Okay. Matter of fact, when I was in the movie theater watching that, uh, when he kept throwing the bricks, I was laughing hysterically at that movie. <laughs> <laughs> I don't, I don't like know I, if I know the second one as well. The first one, though, is a classic. Mm-hmm. And it, you know, it, I don't know if it's what you would call a great holiday movie, but... It's more of a movie on, you know, uh, child neglect than it is a holiday <laughs> movie. But <laughs> I mean, let's not let's not touch on the glaring topic of you know, child neglect. I mean, obviously they left a child home alone, (laughs) hence the name of the movie. And, uh, you know, you don't hear that subject get talked about enough at the end of the movie when the mom comes home and the cops are all there arresting the bad guys. (laughs) (laughs) Yeah. We're all supposed to just gloss over the fact like it didn't happen. (laughs) No, 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 not in my world. (laughs) And here's a bigger topic that I probably shouldn't bring up. But being labeled a holiday movie is almost a curse on a movie. Mm Because, sure, you might see Christmas Vacation 27 times between now and Christmas, but you never see it the rest of the year. And, like, Home Alone, I remember not that long ago, you could watch that movie any time of the year. But now it feels like you can only watch it at Christmas. Yeah. You know what? You bring up a good point. Die Hard. Well, I was going to get to that when we come back from break. Oh, perfect. There are... We come back from break. I think it's time to break into the old holiday eggnog. Oh, yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah. We'll be right back. Jim Deasy. Hey, hey, the big guy. Hey, hey. I, I, I heard some news today. Oh, what'd you hear? Buzzsprout. Oh, yeah. Oh, tell Buzzsprout. me more about Buzzsprout. They are the go-to for starting a podcast. So if I wanted to start a podcast, what do Absolutely. I do? You go to our link. that you The link in the show notes? Page. Yeah, absolutely in the show notes. <laughs> wow. And, and then it's yeah. just that simple? You just go to Buzzsprout and you can start a podcast? And if you make two, after you subscribe and you make two of your payments, they'll send you a $25 gift card wow, to Amazon. A, a $20 gift card to Amazon. That's amazing. Oh, is it 20 bucks? <laughs> yeah. Hey, all right. twenty. Hey, $20 is $20. <laughs> the, and in this tumultuous year that everybody has had, what better way not to, to, to wind down and express yourself and have some fun and start a podcast? And Use if Buzz you don't Sprout. know, yeah, if you don't know what you're doing, Buzzsprout can help you. They have tutorials, they have videos, and probably most importantly, they will help you get your podcast on all the major podcast sites. Apple. Like, Oh, Spotify, you, you, <laughs> you go anywhere and, and you'll find talking baloney because we're everywhere. And it's all because of Buzzsprout. Yeah. Buzzsprout folks, Buzzsprout. So don't forget, click on the link, sign up and start a podcast. What are you waiting yeah. for? But I mean, you should start your own podcast. I mean, why not? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> all wow. right it's time it's time 
You know I love eggnog, folks, and it's the holiday season, and you can't have the holidays without eggnog. Uh, I'm not sure you've ever had eggnog like this before, I'm guessing. <laughs> no, I have not. This is uh, Evan seal. Williams, famous for their whiskey. Whew. That doesn't smell like eggnog. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, it pours like a little eggnog. It's got a little thickness to it. So, thick and creamy? A little thick and creamy. Let's give it a little... Okay, now I, don't, I don't smell much of anything here. I smell... That could be, that could be COVID. Yeah. <laughs> I, can't, I can't smell anything. What the Co hell's going on? Comes on quick. <laughs> Man, that stuff sets in, COVID sets in quick. <laughs> I just smelled the fireball two minutes ago. Now I can't smell anything. <laughs> All right, here we go. All right, once again, Evans Williams eggnog, Southern eggnog, bottoms up, salute. Okay, this is deceiving because you don't <laughs> smell it. Tastes just like eggnog. Just like, oh man, that's good stuff right there. You, you could oh, definitely another. have a, you could definitely have a drinking problem after this. <laughs> so we're gonna we're gonna try one more of this one. Hang on, folks. I'm not a pro at this, so I'm a novice. Maybe okay. do a little a little sip first, so you can get a real taste of it. Yeah, I, I guess you're supposed to what? Uh, swirl around, swirl it around in your cup a little bit. Well, that's wine, but oh, yeah, that's for that's for yuppies. <laughs> Here, talking baloney, we drink the hard stuff. <laughs> we tackle the tough questions. Now, I can't taste any alcohol in this. That's what's, and that's scary because that's one of those drinks that'll knock you on your socks. <laughs> yeah. So. Definitely has the flavor of eggnog. No, seriously, no, no alcohol bite to it at all. How, how does that compare to other eggnogs you've had? Is it a, is it a good eggnog? I would give it a, a milder burned dairy eggnog. Wow, I praise. A good, that's a good eggnog. Yeah, and I gotta say, after I have this second rest of the second one, it'll probably be lights out for me in about an hour. <laughs> but you know what? Hey, how can you can't celebrate the holidays without a little special something for the folks? <sighs> no alcohol flavor. Okay, I got a little bit on that back that back one there. Maybe that's good maybe stuff. You're supposed to swirl that around. That is good stuff. Not gonna lie, folks. Evans Williams eggnog. Boom, two shots right there. Woo! Yeah. <laughs> Highly recommend if that, it. If that don't put hair on your chest, I don't know what will. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I might need to so, shave before the show's over. <laughs> <laughs> so before I went to break, you brought up Die Hard. Yeah. So I've got uh, uh, like five movies here, and we're going to decide whether they're holiday movies or not. Okay, let's do it. Die hard. I'm not going to lie. Whew, that last shot of cinnamon stuff. <laughs> that's right. Man, that shit's strong. <laughs> strong. <laughs> Whoops. <laughs> Die hard. Holiday movie? So, I'm torn on this one because I, Die Hard to me is just an action movie. It's not a holiday movie. But I get it. Was it released during Christmas? I mean, I know it takes place during the Christmas season. Yeah, it takes place on Christmas Eve, I believe. Mm -hmm. I don't think it was released during the holidays, but uh, maybe. Mm -hmm. I'm I'm torn. This is not a holiday movie to me. I'm sorry, it's not. Yeah, I I kind of agree because it's uh the the setting being Christmas related really has nothing to do with the story. It could have been New Year's Eve party. It could have been a Halloween party. It could have been any holiday. Just it's an excuse to have all the people in that building when the rest of the building is empty. 
So yeah, to me, it's, it's you know, it could have been a Fourth of July party. <laughs> yeah, that I mean, might have been better actually. It'd be like if they released Predator with Arnold Schwarzenegger and Carl Weathers in December, and they called it a Christmas movie. <laughs> well, that brings up the next one, Gremlins. <laughs> Okay, so I'm going to go with Gremlins is a Christmas movie, and here's why. Okay. Because in the opening scene of the movie, when the dad is looking for a gift, a special Christmas gift for his son, that's when he stumbles upon, the I Magui. don't remember, the, the Magwai, yeah. You know, yeah. He, he hears it singing in the little cage, and he's like, I gotta have it. And the guy's like, no, he's like, but no, I gotta have it. And then the, the little grandson even grandson sells it out from underneath his grandfather in a back alleyway yeah. you know <laughs> and yeah gizmo uh does like <laughs> ride around in the uh the toy sports car and yeah i could see that being more of a christmas movie yeah i mean the, even the grocery store or not grocery store but the the sporting goods or whatever store it was it had their christmas display set up for the holidays and you know, Christmas lights were up in the town, and right. it was all based around the Christmas season. So I'll say that's a Christmas movie. I would say Christmas is more important to the plot, so it is mm -hmm. a Christmas movie. Yeah. How about Lethal Weapon? Definitely not a Christmas movie. Not a Christmas movie. <laughs> just, just the fact that it's got Mel Gibson in it, you couldn't say it's a Christmas movie with a straight face. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Batman Returns. <laughs> Okay, this is the one with Mr. Freeze in it, right? No, this is the one with Danny DeVito as the penguin. Oh, yeah, 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 okay. Uh, no. Okay, no. takes place at Christmas. I don't think there's enough emphasis or focus on Christmas in this movie for it to be a Christmas movie. Edward Scissorhands. Okay, now, this is I'm, I'm torn on this one because... Edward Scissorhands made it snow with his ice sculptures, but it wasn't really Christmas time, and it wasn't really not Christmas time, correct, in this movie? Well, I believe the movie spans a, a, a bunch of time, but I do believe Christmas is involved. Okay. Well, I don't know. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to stay N.A. on this one. Okay. <laughs> I'll probably need AA after this episode, but I'm going to stay <laughs> NA on this particular question. <laughs> All right. And the, the last one from our, our little, is it a Christmas movie while you were sleeping? Okay. I'm torn on this one too. Cause Sandra Bullock, you got the, the guy from independence day. Yep. Um, so Sandra Bullock in the, in the movie, um, Meets this guy or whatever on Christmas Eve. Yeah. And she uh, goes with him to the hospital because he's like hit by a train or whatever. Yeah. And everyone thinks that she's the fiance. And yeah. in fact, she doesn't even know him. But then she falls in love with Brian Pullman, who's the brother of the guy. Christmas is like a small part of the beginning of the movie. It's more of a, yeah, I was going to say it's like a backstory to the movie. But. Doesn't she, like, wish something for Christmas, like she'd meet somebody or, I don't know, something like that. I, I like the movie. It's a nice movie. Yeah. Nice, you know, nice date movie, you know. Take the significant other out for a little romance, little dinner, whatever. <laughs> you know, I, I think there's a, f a feeling among people, younger people, like, mm -hmm. if any movie has the slightest bit of Christmas in it, it has to be a Christmas movie. Yeah, and see, that's the problem, where our younger generation is just being misled. <laughs> well, it's, or they, it's can, or they it's can't think for themselves. Right? <laughs> yeah. Because, like, like we're talking about, once you're branded a holiday movie, it's like you can only watch it in December. Yeah, I'm sorry. I, I can't. It's like I can't watch Passion of the Christ only at Easter. Wow. <laughs> Maybe it's time for another shot. <laughs> <laughs> I think we're going to do another shot of the eggnog. I kind of like that flavor. Go for it. You know, I think we all... One more shot, folks, of the old eggnog. That's what we're going to do. And uh, while you're getting ready for that shot, mm -hmm. I'll let you know the next movie we're going to talk about is Christmas with the Cranks. 
Okay, so I like this movie. Okay. I like this movie because uh, he's got the uh, attitude of get off my lawn. I don't want to celebrate Christmas. And, I mean, I guess in the end he becomes a softy and, you know, the whole town steps in and helps him decorate for his daughter that, ex- you know, loves Christmas and expects decorations and the holidays and the trimmings and all that, you know. It wouldn't be a but, Christmas movie if he didn't come around. Yeah. I mean, they could have stayed true to the fact that, you know, he didn't want to celebrate Christmas and just left it at that. And at the end, when the daughter came home, she was disappointed. <laughs> <laughs> that would probably I mean, be a terrible movie. <laughs> but think about it. You just think about it. I mean, Tim Allen's character was great. He At the end of the movie, she comes home and there's no decorations. There's no lights on the street. There's no turkey dinner there's <laughs> okay <laughs> that would have been great <laughs> all right you got that shot ready boom we're ready to go right Here there we folks. Go. Mm. you don't even taste it that's the weird thing about it man that's that's some heavy stuff and i don't even taste it mm. I'm telling you. Wow, this might become a a weekly tradition. (laughs) Yeah. I really need a partner for this. (laughs) Well, you know, COVID. (laughs) Damn that COVID. (laughs) What a a jerk. (laughs) How about uh, Planes, Trains, and Automobiles? Another movie we've talked about. I'm going to say definitely a Christmas movie. And... This movie you should be watching every every month of the year. Yeah. But John Candy and Steve Martin's character and their on-screen chemistry in this movie is phenomenal. Yeah. And, this is an all-time classic. Yeah, and you if this is just one of those stories you never know who you're talking to or what their backstory is. Yeah. You just don't you don't know. You don't know. You know, somebody the person you're saying hi to today and Give him a smile. Could be dead tomorrow. You don't know. You have no idea. <laughs> One of my favorite scenes is when uh, they're going the wrong way on the highway. Uh huh. And the car pulls up next to him, and everyone in the car is screaming, "You're going the wrong way!" <laughs> and John Candy just turns to Steve Martin and is like, "What's that guy? He doesn't know where we're going." <laughs> <laughs> you know. Man, that's one actor that we need today. It's sad he's not around anymore. I get it. You know, like, people die, and that's what happens. But, yeah. man. Recently celebrated what would have been his 70th birthday, too. So, Yeah. Man. We need more funny people and more funny movies. <laughs> there isn't enough there, of it. There, no. there might be, but. You know, instead, instead we're making Tomb Raider four, five, and six. Like, who gives who gives a crap about Tomb Raider? Roar. How about give me Bill a, Murray? Give me jo- oh, Bill Murray. Oh, Scrooge. Yeah. Probably Scrooge. one of the. I'm I'm probably one of the better top ten movies of mine for Christmas. Definitely. I love that movie, and it touches on everything. It's got a little romance in it got a little friendship in it got a yep. little arrogance in it you know i'm better than you are kind of you know and then yeah. but it's got the bill murray spin on it too yeah well anytime you let bill murray be bill murray in a movie it's gonna be good and th- Listen, this one feels I, like they really let him kind of put parts of himself into the character the only thing that would have made Scrooge better is if the Ghostbusters made an appearance on it. <laughs> but they didn't make the appearance as the Ghostbusters. You know what I mean? Like, they all showed up, but they were different characters, uh, but not the Ghostbusters. That would have been okay. cool. So Scrooge is uh, a modern update on Charles Dickens' A Christmas Carol. Which is probably the most filmed uh, Christmas story of all time. I mean, there's so many versions of it. But mm-hmm. one of the more interesting versions, I thought, was the Muppets Christmas Carol. Okay. I like the Muppets Christmas Carol. But I, I will say this. 
when it comes to the movie Scrooged, the worst version of Scrooge I've ever seen, Jim Carrey's version. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Absolutely trash. <laughs> trash, garbage, whatever you want to call it. Yeah. Man. Listen, I you uh, call it C- CGI, whatever you want to call it. That movie yeah. is gar. It's da- it's damn right scary to watch. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that one did not make the list because <laughs> I thank God, not yeah. a Christmas movie. Even though it's a spinoff of a Christmas movie, it's not a Christmas. This is a horror flick. <laughs> I had this movie on Blu-ray, and it had a making of the movie ed- edition in the Blu-ray pack. And it showed how they made it with the CGI and all that. That's, man, they would have been better off if they would have just said Ace Ventura's pet detective in Scrooged, <laughs> you know, and had him just play Ace Ventura gets visited by three ghosts. I would have bought into that. That would have been funny. <laughs> okay. So not funny. Uh, <laughs> no. It was not Tim Burton. It was Robert Zemeckis. Uh-huh. And it was during that phase where he he kind of left uh, live-action films and started doing all these CGI movies. He did the Polar Express as well. And, yeah, now, there's something just unnatural about the looks of people in those movies. Are you going to be mentioning Polar Express here soon? Just right now, because I, I didn't really care for it either. Oh, thank God. Listen, I'm a Tom Hanks fan. I think Tom – listen, I just saw Tom Hanks' Greyhound movie. That he yeah. just, that Apple on Apple TV. Oh, you saw it on Apple TV. I'm not going to lie. I did. I saw it. It was free. <laughs> and uh, uh, <laughs> I did see it. Great movie. Loved it. Um, Tom Hanks in an army movie, battle movie, whatever is great. But anyway, yeah. getting back to the Polar Express. I mean, obviously we knew it was Tom Hanks as the conductor. But the kids just look downright evil in this movie. They look like children of the corn meets christmas <laughs> it's unnatural it doesn't look right listen what the kid that keeps dropping the polar express ticket like <laughs> listen it gets to a point throw the kid off the damn train he can't hold on to his ticket get rid of him we could have cut 25 minutes out of that movie <laughs> all right let's let's end on a uh, a high note with uh, bad um, santa uh bill goldberg right <laughs> Uh, Bad Santa with Billy Bob Thornton. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. That's right. That's right. Um, I like anything with Billy. Santa with muscles. Is that what you're thinking? That's it. That's it. That's it. Yep. (laughs) Trash. Don't mention it. (laughs) Yeah, we're not. (laughs) Billy Bob. Anything with Billy Bob Thornton in it, I like. Yeah. I just I I like the guy as an actor, just because man, he's just he's in every character he does, and I you already know how I feel about that. If you're going to invest the time and the effort into the character, you got my vote for an Emmy or an Oscar. And you had Bernie Mac in the movie. Yeah. You can't go wrong. Yeah. It's a classic. <laughs> mm-hmm. uh, I have a bunch more on our list, but we're kind of running out of time. Yeah. We got we got Baloney Nation to get to still. <laughs> well, we come back, folks. I think it's time to take a little sip of Jim Beam Apple. Whoa. <laughs> And don't forget, there's a Smirnoff apple still. Yeah, I don't even know. Man, my head's already. Woohoo! <laughs> <laughs> awesome. <laughs> Throw them back to you... popcorn. <laughs> <laughs> so, your strategy right now, because you've had about five shots. Yep. Have a little caramel corn, <laughs> a little Sprite. A couple sips of Sprite here and there. And then yep. your next, your next uh, target is the Smirnoff Green Apples uh, Vodka. Yeah. And then I'll be sending out an SOS here in a few minutes to my wife to come find me if yeah. I, in case I'm wandering around the cornfield. <laughs> now, the uh, you're in the camper, so you're not too far from the main... <laughs> Main HQ. No, no. Headquarters right around the corner. Um, you just got to be careful when you turn your head real fast like that because things get a little blurry. <laughs> <laughs> All right, folks. We're going to we're going the Smirnoff Green Apple. Here we go.
Okay. Inter- interestingly enough, one bottle equals one, one full shot. Oh, man. Okay. Rawr. For for truth in uh, media, full bottle empty. They're probably going to regret this tomorrow. <laughs> Smells just like apple, green apple. Okay. Definitely got a little bit of a robust a- uh, alcohol flavor to it. A little bit like hand sanitizer? Uh, yeah, I'm going to say the hand sanitizer is probably a little stronger. Um, oh, I'm not sure what the, alcohol is, what the alcohol is by volume on this, but uh, bottoms up anyway, folks. Oh. That's disgusting. <laughs> That's disgusting. <laughs> uh, <woo-hoo! laughs> Not no, a fan. No, that's just garbage. <laughs> <laughs> too much? Nah. Too it's much like, apple or just too much vodka? I don't know if it's vodka or they put like NyQuil in it or something, man. It's about, <laughs> tastes like cough medicine. <laughs> wow. Huh. I mean, you can always I get wash it. it down with some eggnog. I wash it down with some caramel. <laughs> caramel popcorn. <laughs> Where's his camera at? <laughs> <laughs> so it's a, the time of the show where we answer <laughs> questions from Baloney Nation. All right. You don't have a question or a comment. It's 585 484 1770. And we're starting this week with a correction. Ah, uh-huh, snap. Aunt Paula? It is not Aunt Paula. What? It's a uh, <laughs> just a random viewer on our hotline. It says, you reminded me how great the theme to Moonlighting was. Al Jarreau actually sang it, not Bruce Willis. Since Jim made this horrible error, I think he should have to read the lyrics to the song for us. Thanks. <laughs> now, when I picked out this question to answer on today's show, I didn't anticipate you having six shots of alcohol. <laughs> hey, <laughs> let me pull up the old Google machine and get the lyrics. All right. Wait, what the heck is this? It's a real song. Yeah. Al Jarreau right. is the real singer. Don't you change some walk by night, some fly by day. <laughs> I, can't, I can't even see these damn things. Uh, nothing could change you set and sure of the way. Charming and bright, laughing and gay. I'm just a stranger. Love the blues and the braves. There is the sun and the moon. They sing their own sweet tune. Watch them when dawn is due, <laughs> sharing one space. What kind of crap is this? No wonder why the show is not on the air anymore. Some walk by night, some wa- fly by day. Some thinks it's sweeter when you meet along the way. Come walk by night, come fly by day. <laughs> I think that's it. Yeah. <laughs> Do you, do you want to try to decipher those lyrics? I had no idea. All I know is that uh, <laughs> it's, it's, I can tell you right now, yeah, you got to be hammered to even try to read the crap. <laughs> <laughs> wow. Well, I'll say I got... so far, the uh, doing shots on the show is probably the best idea you've ever had. <laughs> <laughs> I'm telling you, his caramel popcorn is really good, too. <laughs> <laughs> so, here's a question for you. Which uh-huh. was worse? The movie RoboCop 3, the TV series RoboCop, the cartoon series RoboCop, or the appearance of RoboCop in WCW World Championship Wrestling? Oh, definitely the appearance of w- in WCW. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, my God, that's, that's tied with the uh, RoboCop series, but... Uh, yeah, having RoboCop appear and having anything from like, listen, that's like having Zeus appear in WWE for Hogan. 
or you, you could say worse because at least yeah. Zeus did stuff. Robocop just like walked as slowly as possible to the ring. <laughs> Let's sting out of a cage. And that, that was like it. Yeah. For what? What was the point? What was their connection? I think TBS was showing Robocop that weekend. <laughs> there was no point. You wonder why WCW failed. You know, you go back and look at all these things nowadays, and you'll you'll see it. You know. <sighs> speaking you, of wrestling, uh, you see how bad yeah. Vince looked on Monday. <laughs> oh yeah. Yikes. But, uh, here's a question for Thanksgiving. Okay. Stu- stuffing or potatoes? Stuffing. Unless. It's a baked potato. Okay, so stuffing beats mashed, but baked potato beats stuffing. Correct. This is almost like playing rock, paper, scissors. If, you, if you're like playing it. at home. I like it. Folks, if you're playing along, stuffing beats mashed potatoes. That's when you take the potatoes and you take the skin off and you mash them all together. It's a big bowl of white mush. Looks like grits. <laughs> And one last question. This is a mm-hmm. uh, remember when, if you will. Okay. This person writes, I remember every Friday night going to Blockbuster Video, picking out three movies, and then ordering Domino's Pizza. Do you have any similar, like, 90s memories or things you used to always do? So, when we were growing up, we used to have a, uh, we used to go rent, there was a VCR place. It was like the Brick House Deli or something across when we used to live over on Hudson Street in Elmira. It was a little deli restaurant on the corner where the car wash is now. And they used to rent movies and the VCR to play the movies. Oh, wow. And we used to go over and rent the VCR for the weekend. And you'd, you had your little card. And you'd rent the VCR. They'd give you an actual VCR right over the counter. And you'd rent your movies and you'd go home and watch them. And then we used to do that every Friday night. Saturday night, we'd watch movies, and, uh, yeah, we'd order Pudgy's Pizza. Oh, got to have Pudgy's. Yeah, I mean, Dom- Domino's. It's not even real pizza. <laughs> <laughs> well, we don't it's know like, where this person is writing from. They could, they could be writing from a part of the country that doesn't have Pudgy's, and then we should just true. feel, like, bad for them. And we feel sorry for you. We, you know, if you'd wear a mask, Pudgy would come out there. <laughs> Pudgy, Pudgy pizza. <laughs> yes. Love it. I'm All going right, for Jenna, Pudgy tonight. Are you going to be in any shape to have dinner? I'm not driving, I can tell you that. <laughs> <laughs> how, how do you feel overall? You feel, uh, well, Buzzy, a little tipsy. I, I feel a little buzzy from all the shots. Yeah. Um. Then again, my hat could be on real tight too. We've seen that happen before. But I can tell you, going from left to right, yeah, you definitely feel you had some shots. <laughs> like, probably not a good idea to drink to drive. Oh yeah, you definitely don't want to drive. Yeah, you'll be just another statistic, folks. To walk around doing this. Huh? I'm touching my nose, officer. <laughs> it's like, yeah, but I didn't ask you to. <laughs> and as you know, before we go, we always say any parting shots, but you literally could do a parting shot right now if you wanted. <laughs> the only shot I'm going to drink right now is some Sprite. <laughs> <laughs> well, I tried, I Baloney Nation. Just, just so everybody knows, the last time I drank six shots, I don't even remember. It's been that long. Probably your long bachelor time. party. Probably that. Probably my bachelor party over 10 years ago. <laughs> but, yeah, I will say this before we go. Yeah. People, wear a damn mask. <laughs> okay. Put the mask on. It works. <laughs> We'd like to do this show in person and live in the studio. <laughs> yeah. No. But we can't. <laughs> this was your idea to do the shots. 
I I want your opinion on how it went right now, and then I'm going to ask you again next week your opinion of how it went. I think this went spectacular. I do too. I am astonished. I think we should make this an every week thing where we try out a couple, maybe one, maybe two different uh, alcoholic, you know. Listen, the liquor store is full of bottles. That's true. We could try one or two bottles every week. And they're a small business that needs our support. Support your small liquor store businesses. Hell, they're the only essential business anywhere. It's open. (laughs) Pretty much. You know, hey, take the kids there. Show them how alcohol is made. (laughs) Not sure that's what a liquor store does, but... (laughs) (laughs) Don't forget to tell them talking bologna sent you. (laughs) (laughs) Oh, that's a good plug. (laughs) (laughs) We get enough people walking into the liquor stores across New York State going, hey, Taco Bologna sent me. Eventually, somebody's going to reach out to us and say either, don't mention your show anymore, or they will be like, hey, let's get our stuff on their show. They're reaching millions of people every week. You, you never know. I wouldn't be surprised if you see a spike in eggnog sales for Evan Williams. I'm telling you, you don't know what you're missing right now, folks. Bam! That's that's this is the sh- this is the shizzle right here. I'm telling you right Rawr. now, that stuff sneaks up on you. You don't you don't <laughs> taste the alcohol, but man, it tastes you as soon as you start to move around a little bit. <laughs> <laughs> All right. <laughs> All right. Good show. I think Excellent I think everyone's going to enjoy watching, and uh, just goes to show Jim Deasy will do whatever it takes. Whatever it takes, the best rating. possible podcast. Listen, I offered the big guy. I said, if I have to for ratings, oil myself all up and drink shots live on air, I would do that. And he said, no. No. We will no be one, thrown no off the that. air. <laughs> <laughs> Listen, folks. Uh, happy holidays. <laughs> yeah. And, Jim, if, if you get lost on your way back to the house, just give me a call. I can. Get the GPS out and walk you through it. I got to find my iPhone on. I don't know what the hell it does, but it's on. Okay. We'll, we'll find you. <laughs> Look for the buzzards. <laughs> <laughs> my Roddy, my Roddy Carcass. <laughs> <laughs> <laughs>